What's up, guys? I'm Josh with Wisconsin Fishing Adventures, and I got Braden with me today. We're starting a new segment called Tackle Talk, and this week we're going to talk about what we like to use for early spring bass uh, before game fish opens in most of Wisconsin. DNR opened it a couple years ago, and I uh, really enjoyed fishing it. There's one. Looks like a smallmouth. Oh, and he's airborne. There you go, guys. Mission accomplished. Got a nice smallmouth on the rattling Google Eye jig head with the tickle tail. Darn nice smallie. Not huge, but a good one. My favorite bait to throw in the spring for smallmouth is the Acme V-Rod blade bait. You can obviously throw any brand. Um, I like to throw the 3 8 ounce if I'm fishing over eight feet deep and anything under that, I like the quarter ounce. I run a 10 to 12 pound floral leader down to a duo lock with 20 pound braid. And I like to throw that on a medium fast rod. If you go with a medium light, you can't feel the bait working quite right. Doesn't seem to get quite the same action. So definitely go with a medium fast and uh, just throw that on a Shimano Sedona 2500 series. Um, really fun to fish that presentation. They go pretty wild for it, especially as the water warms up. <clears throat> when the water is a little bit colder, I like throwing a quarter ounce Kalen's Rattling Google Eye Jig Head. Um, obviously lots of different colors that you can throw on there. Um, otherwise, if I'm fishing real shallow, I'll use an eighth ounce jig. Um, if the bite is pretty finicky, I'll throw a sucker or fathead minnow on there. And if the bite's pretty good, I like to run a plastic on there. And my favorite plastics to use are definitely the Kalen's Tickle Tail. That's a bluegill color. I think they discontinued that, but I really like that color, unfortunately. Um, here is my other favorite color. That is an albino shad. I think it imitates bait fish really, really good. I can show you that here. I was actually using this one today. Got a nice small mouth on that. So I think it imitates a bait fish really good with that little bit of purple in the back and kind of the white clear belly. So I think that's a good one you can use pretty much anywhere. It's real natural. And then I like anything green or fire tiger. So got to have some green ones. And uh, with that, forgot to mention, if I'm running a plastic, I like using this long shank hook with the bait keeper. And if I'm using live bait, I like using the short shank hook. And if I can, I like having a red hook. So if you guys can find those ones with the red hooks, um, anything red, any little bit of flash of red you can put on your bait always seems to I believe, really help get a bite. Yeah, I believe in red too. Um, any other colors you like with that V, v rod? Or v rod, that... um, I guess that's kind of my favorite color, but I think they all work pretty good. I think the V rod's a little bit more of a reaction bite. Sure, then maybe not much of a color bite. Yeah. I just know yeah. a lot of guys run the gold, but I do like the orange, the way the orange fire tiger yeah. looks. I mean, yeah, I have some of every color. I switch them up every now and again, but. That, that Maverick, that kind of fire tiger color, seems to work really well for me. Anyways. Yeah. What do you like to use, Braden? Ah, uh, well, I'm really simple when it comes to early season bass. I mean, uh, obviously what Josh um, showed you guys before works. Um, I personally am a jig, jigging kind of guy as well. Um, but I like to use the football jigs, uh, weedless football jigs. And this is a Bitsy Bug. Uh, I think it's a mini Bitsy Bug. I think Strike King makes it. Um, real cheap, but really, really quality jig. And then I, any kind of craw works. Um, personally, I do like the Kraken craws. I like the softer plastics. Um, I like the scent. I have no idea if it works, but it's it's better than smelling that fishy smell when you open up the gulp minnows. <laughs> Um, it's more of a, it's like a black licorice smell, anise, right. I believe. Yep. Um, and what I do is I just, you know, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to ruin the plastic, but I just up and in, make sure that these are flopping the way they should. Um, also what I do if it's a short bite, um, is I clip the end of these off. Should we show a full one? Yeah, I can show a full one. Definitely smells like black licorice. Yeah, it does. They're <laughs> really oily, and they're just a softer plastic. I think I, I feel like I get more bites with them. 
But if it's if, if they're biting, and typically in the spring, they're either biting like, you know, they're slamming it or they're just barely taking it. So if they're barely taking it, what happens typically is they'll, they'll chew these off. They'll come in and they'll be clipped off. So if, as soon as that happens, I, I go from that second one down and I clip it off with your fingers, with your, you know, so you can see then you it's quite with, a bit shorter. Yeah, you end up with a, probably about an inch, inch and a half shorter presentation. Correct. Yep. And basically what that does is, I mean, it's not going to, you're not going to get any more bites, but you're going to get more hookups because... They just, I don't know what it is. Um, I think sometimes a bass's uh, stomach is bigger than its eyes. Yeah. Or, uh, or I'm sorry, Mouth. the eyes are bigger than its stomach. So it's it's looking at something that's like, yeah, I can eat this. And then they get like this. And it's and what happens, they rip those off. Yeah. So as soon as that happens, I shorten it up. And actually a high school kid that I fish with, funny enough, I was getting really mad one day. Um, I could not get a bite. Well, I shouldn't say that. I couldn't get a hookup. It's getting plenty of bites, and I kept losing my, my, um, the legs, the claws, the claws on it. And uh, anyway, the kid was like, "Hey, you know, have you ever clipped those down?" And I said, "No, they're six dollars a freaking thing. I'm definitely not clipping them down." And he's like, "Just do it once." And first time I did it, I caught a fish on the first cast. So that's actually who taught me. So you learn these things over time fishing with other people. I've learned a ton from Josh. Um, Anyway, sorry, I'm babbling. Second thing I use is just a typical, um, simple tube, and I like I like green in the I like green all year round. Um, it's natural. It's a natural color. Um, I do like white in these two and purple. Um, but what you do is um, I don't know if I showed that the tube jig, and you get. You flip it upside down, you stick that in all the way, put it down like this, and what you want to do is just pop that the eyelid out. And it just pops through the plastic, and these plastics are actually kind of tough, which is not a bad thing. It'll last a while. Yeah, because sometimes if they're not, it'll cut right through them. But anyway, right. it cuts down like that, and then you just throw that on. I, I like shallow rocks, any kind of sand humps um in the early spring you know obviously that changes but that's what i like to use um simple cheap it's usually gets the job done um and you get quite a bit of numbers and i mean i like live bait yep. uh so like what josh was saying with the google eye that's what i would try first if it was me and then i moved to this stuff because it's i i just i like to uh, I think I get more, I get bigger fish on plastics. Absolutely. I don't know how you do. But Absolutely. Definitely get bigger yeah. fish on artificial baits. So, what type of rod are you throwing? Oh, here yeah. Then? I use a St. Croix Triumph. I don't even, do they make Triumphs anymore? Yep. They, they do. sure okay. do. That's what I run. This is about a 10 year old rod. Um, I got it from my grandpa years ago. Uh, medium, seven footer. I do like seven footers um, and I do like a fast action. Um, and that's just basically because it's got plenty of. I can't really show it, but it's basically, it's got a lot of flop in the tip, but you got plenty of backbone when you do set the hook on those bigger fish. Yep, absolutely. So you can feel the bite, but you got that backbone. Um, I run a Lose Infinity, or Xfinity, I'm sorry. I, I don't remember where I got this reel, but I do like it a lot. Um, and then I run 12 pound, I think tri line. You know, I don't get too fancy with my line. I know some people do, but right. I buy it in bulk and that's what I use. And I like a good mono. And, and mostly I'm running mono on bait casters right. um, before the rat tails. Yep. yep. Or rat that's... nests, whatever. Rat nests, sorry. Yep, absolutely. Um, so and that's that, that's something to mention kind of with everything is you don't have to have a St. Cry rod. No. You don't have to use Power Pro or Seaguard no. or you don't have to use a, a Shimano reel, no. super expensive. No, um, use what you, you can use. Yeah, use use whatever you know you can afford. Get out there, get on the water. Um, most important thing with a rod is making sure that you can basically feel the bite. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's the right uh, power for what fish you're going for so that you're able yeah. to land the fish. You're not fishing in ultra lights, fishing for smallmouth. Now, right. let that be fun, yes, but right. ideally, 
probably not what you would go. Yeah, for, you know, and it's so. a lot tougher on the fish. If you have to mm-hmm. fight them for a half hour to bring them in, it's a lot tougher on the fish. Exactly. Um, if you're not planning on keeping them to eat them, you want to make sure you get a healthy release. Exactly. But and yeah, I mean, whether it's baits, line, rods, reels, use what you can afford, get out there, find find whatever works for you uh, with a reel. Yeah. Biggest thing is, is make sure it reels smooth and make sure it has a smooth drag. Yeah, I think the drag is the, probably the biggest thing. Yep. Um, I've bought in some cheap ones over the years, and the drag starts slipping, and it's a nightmare. Um, if you guys are looking for a real uh, affordable option, I, I do recommend the thirteen Team 13s. I believe they're called... I probably have one somewhere, but they're about a $35 rod anyway. Uh, the K-Source okay. is what they're called. Um, they go on sale for about 35 bucks, and it's a really, really good rod, uh, or uh, Shield, reel. Yeah, Shields makes some really good rods, they, really uh, affordable. Yes. Shields is a great place to get rods yep. uh, on a budget. Yep. Um, Even the St. Croix Triumphs, you know, definitely a little bit more spendy, but about a $100 rod yep. for a spinning rod. But which, a warranty for life, Yep, you I get, a, you get a warranty. Um, I've been running them for a few years, and yeah. I fish a lot. I've never had any issues with them. No, so. I like them. I, I like Shields rods, too. You do get the cheaper Shield rods. They... Um, they, they, you know, they're not super tough, right. but the nice thing about Shields is they have three-year warranties on all of their rods, um, or all the rods that I have, and they are great, and we're not sponsored by any, any means, but you bring it back, they're friendly, they're like, yep, you know, it's a bad, great, it's a great man. customer yeah, service. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I pretty much have switched everything to Shields through me, um, just because I'm closer to Shields yep. for the warranty work rather than having to drive to Park Falls, right. um, for the, for the St. Croix, but St. Croix is a great rod. Yep. Berkeley, I mean, everybody makes there, a good rod. Yep, absolutely. Just look for the sales. Yep. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this week's episode, guys. That is what we like to use for spring uh, bass. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about what we like to use for early spring walleye. It's kind of yep. fishing opener for Wisconsin is coming up here pretty soon. So we'll be talking about three, that. Three weeks? Yeah, about two, three weeks, somewhere in there. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about what we like to use for early spring walleyes. So if you guys like this content, make sure you leave a comment down below. Subscribe. We'll be doing hopefully one of these every week or maybe every two hopefully, weeks. Hopefully, yeah. Kinda if depends. you guys like them. Yeah, it depends on how busy we are and if you guys like them. And I don't know, this is Josh's channel, but if there's anything, I, like any good ideas you guys have, I would say throw them in the comments. And, yeah, anything you guys want to know yeah, about or anything yeah. that you want us to kind of review or try. Yeah. Let us know. We love like trying out new baits. Yeah, and I mean we're products. average. We're average fishermen. We're not anything special. We yep. just like to sit in my basement and make videos and yep and uh, have fun. Yep. So yeah, and that's something to mention, guys. We're not sponsored by anyone. We're just using stuff that works good for us that we like. We're not we're not uh, saying this is the only way to catch fish. There's lots of other ways to do it. Lots of different baits, presentations, Correct. colors, companies. Just what we like to use. So. We'll be covering more of this. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you hit that follow button and turn hit the bell so that you see all the videos. Stay safe and tight lines.